the assembler. <laughs> the part that parses our little assembly language and builds a virtual machine, a set of virtual machine instructions. So we started out by just filling up a, an array in memory with just the actual, you know, instructions here, right? The next thing we did was we implemented a uh, formatter so that we can see the output of them. So I printed this out, or sort of the, so the state of it, so to speak, what the computer sees. And then after that, we built an interpreter or evaluator or whatever you want to call that, the, the thing that actually like executes the instructions in a virtual machine. And then we got to a point where it starts getting kind of kind of janky to like write programs like this and compile them into the program. It'd be nice if we can write them sort of like this, like this text. It is probably hard to see. So let's paste that to here. Oops. Um, and remove that. Okay. So it'd be nice if we can write code that kind of looks like this. And to begin with, we're just gonna explicitly name the arguments, but eventually, as we were talking about in an earlier part, will be um, able to, to use any names here and have sort of the, the assembler allocate registers for us. But we're not gonna get to that uh, just now, but a little bit later. Okay, so this is the goal to be able to write something like this. And then for a little parser to, uh, to parse this <laughs> and to build uh, these instructions for us that we can then run. And uh, that way we can give you know, we can compile this little program and then we can just sort of give it some text and it can just kind of run it. So yesterday I uh, started working on a simple parser. That's what we'll be working on today. So first off, a couple of tokens. Actually, I should give it an, a little bit of overview perhaps of the, of the structure of these things. And so um, the first off, the goal for the assembler is uh, Assembler does one scan scan the input for uh, tokens. Still getting a SSD word. Scan the input for tokens. The next thing that it does is that it parses the semantic meaning of those uh, tokens, right? So that becomes some sort of uh, AST. Uh, and after that, it generates, it actually, it probably like checks it, uh, checks, checks that the um, AST or whatever is uh, valid, right? Like, you know, if you like types and stuff like that. Uh, it won't be very complicated since our assembly language is very simple. And finally, it generates code, right? Our VM instructions, that is. And eventually constants and stuff like that. Okay, so that is what the assembler does. So far, I've implemented this part and we can have a look at that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is um, to parse the, to assign meaning to these tokens. So first off, here is a uh, definition of all the different tokens that might occur in the source text. And here, which, so the, this becomes an item just off to here. We can see it at the end, here's an item, right? So, and here is the um, the end of the input stream token. So we'll, we'll see in a minute here while that is useful. Anyhow, that's what that is. This one says that this token is a comment and comments in the in the syntax that I've come up with so far is slash slash kind of like the, the line comments of C and many other languages like this. Like that. And then we have a couple of simple tokens, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, semicolon, um, equals slash minus. There'll be more of these here later, right? Like plus and stuff like that. Then we have uh, names, 
And these are things that, you know, these tokens have um, some, there's some set of bytes or some integer value uh, associated with these. So I'll label it something that kind of looks like this, you know, it's some, some name and a colon, uh, a register, something that looks like this is a capital R with a number um, or capital F with a number. And anything else that doesn't match these things is just some symbolic name. Um, and uh, I, this is how I like to use write parsers. I'll start with something like, like this, something like this, where there is a end of input token. Usually there's not a common token, just ignore comments, but, and then, um, just uh, just the very few basic things that I need, and that's sort of like a, a catch-all. That's like a, a symbolic, like a, um, a, a name if you want it, or identifier, or whatever you want to call it. Sort of like anything that that doesn't parse as these things will be treated as a name, separated by white space. So uh, yes, I'm doing what I did there. So. Uh, the, the the symbol token that is what most things that got you know th that doesn't have specific syntax that is going to become uh, or patterns are going to become a symbol uh, then we have literal numbers these are sort of like you know you just type something like this by the way if it's not apparent each of these tokens have a little example next to them uh, just to to make it easy to remember what they what they represent so we want to be able to use, you know, write one, two, three in our source code, right? To, to mean like the number one, two, three. Um, and uh, it's also possible to write a negative number. There are three uh, bases that I currently support. It's pretty easy to add other support for other bases, but these are the ones that uh, I think I'll need or want. So base two, zero B is the prefix ones and zeros. Base 10, no prefix, is decimal. And base 16, hexadecimal, uh, CRX, or capital, or lowercase for both of these, okay. Um, and and all of these can accept a, a, a negative sort of a sign at the, at the beginning, and the scanner will treat them differently if they do, for example, you know, overflow shaking up the value. So what's, and then we'll follow here. It's just keywords. So these are things that are that are parsed as symbols. And then we'll be like, hey, wait a second. F U N is actually like a keyword called you know function definition keyword. And I sixteen right is a um, also a keyword. I sixteen keyword for the type I sixteen. Uh, just putting them here makes it like really easy to play around with these things because never ever <laughs> have. Uh, have I put something like this together and it just right on the on the first try? So we definitely gonna have to change this. So it's nice to set this up to make playing around easy. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this the the scanner, the part that's that scans the input. So we go to the bottom here. Here is uh, the the main function, the entry here. That is the assembly function assemble. It takes a uh, destination so output. Uh, array of instructions, uh, the capacity of that array, and then it takes the input source as just a, a, a currently it's just a um, zero terminated, like a case C string. Um, but it then the first thing we do is just call the parse function. So remember, like the there are four stages to this. The first one is to scan the input tokens and parse the semantic meaning of those tokens. And we got to do that in just one go. This is not it, a more complicated language might separate the two. Um, but in this case, we just kind of sort of mix them together because it's a, it's a sim simple syntax. So the first thing we do is just to do that parse. And eventually we'll do, you know, analysis to check for things. So to do analysis and then we'll, we'll do code gen, code generation. So the parse function starts out by just allocating a bit of state. It allocates an all the stack here and passes a pointer. Uh, the the parse state we have here. This is uh, data that will uh, mostly change as the scanner and parser. As we're, I'm just gonna say parsing, 
as we're parsing the input, these things are changing. Here's a cursor to the, uh, the current slash next byte that we're looking at in the input stream. This just tells us when the input stream actually ends. This is the beginning of the current token that we just parsed. This is the beginning of the current line. And from this, we can compute the, uh, the column. We're gonna have to keep that separate. Uh, well, this could be done in two ways. This is usually how I do it. It just allows for like indentation, sensitive syntax and stuff to implement it this way. Uh, this is the line number. It starts with one and it counts up every time we encounter a, um, a line feed. Then we have a the current token and that's one of these constants that we looked at up here. So one of these. That is the, the token that we just parsed or scanned. This is a flag that says, are we going to insert a, a synthetic semicolon token or not? This is a really neat trick that I've learned from the Go compiler. Um, it allows us to write code that can have statements separated either by line breaks or by semicolons. And you can kind of intermix that um, in a very deterministic and easy to parse way. It's not like JavaScript. <laughs> so uh, so this is a, I, I, I like this web for anything. So anyhow, so this is going to just be set to true depending on the type of token that we scan. So if we scan something like a plus token, it's going to be false because it expects something to come after plus. But if you scan something like a, a number literal or a name or a symbol, it will be set to true. And if we then encounter a new line, we're going to just, you know, kind of uh, tell the parser that like, yeah, there's a semicolon here, although it isn't. This flag is, is specifically for parsing numbers. This says if the uh, the number that we're, we has parsed, if that's negative. And we have a member here for the value of a number that we has parsed uh, or are parsing. And finally, we have just a uh, an error sort of message. So this is set to not know when an error occurred. It's not very, it's not very complicated, the error handling we need here. So this is gonna be enough, at least for now. Okay, so back to the parse function. So we set that up, uh, our parse state here. We set the cursor, the input cursor to the the source text, the beginning of it, we set the end to the source text, uh, to the, you know, to the first, to the address just after the source text. And in this case, remember, we are starting out, we're not really taking files as inputs just yet. What we do, we'll add like a, you know, a size argument here. But for now, we're just taking a C string. So that's we'll use string line here. We set up line start. Uh, the start of the first line is the, you know, it's the start of the input. The, we initialize line number to, to one. If line numbers were zero initialized, we can just drop that since, you know, uh, in C, at least C11, then any unnamed members here would be zero. And uh, here's our main scanning loop. So we'll be, we'll be adding to this and, and doing some parsing in here. And currently there's a function that's defined just above here. Um, bring that into view. It's the log parse state, and this function up here is just for is for development purposes. This is the one that if we let's run this a few times, we can see it running. Uh, I think my computer is struggling a little bit. It looks like linking is taking a while. Okay. Um, so this function just prints out the the tokens that we're seeing. So question mark here means that I'm a step somewhere. <laughs> oh, look at that. For each keyword token. Okay, there we go. Um, so we are scanning a token and we we keep scanning for the next token. So we say, hey, scan the next token. And unless that token was the TN token, so this is the end of input stream, print it and then scan another one, right? And so we just keep going. So let me show you the input here. Gonna, let's copy this in here so we can have a look at that in our parse function. Uh, let me clean this up a little bit. 
I was just playing around with some some stuff. Let's do test things out. Make sure we're before we start this video. Okay, so this is the this is the current input that's at source. So first we we uh, scan fun, which is a keyword. So we get keyword function, line one, column one. Then we get a name, sim a symbol, or whatever. Um, and that's factorial, right? And we get the parentheses here, start parentheses and parentheses. And then we get a keyword I32. Uh, and we get another keyword I32. And now we get we see here now we got our special um, magical semicolon generated from uh, just the line break here. Next thing we get a label. We don't get a semicolon after the label. So here's a condition where you know uh, you know you can you can just do this, this is just as valid. And next, you know, we get a, a register. So a capital R, as I mentioned earlier, is a, a special in this little syntax. I was debating a little bit about maybe she used something else like dollar or registers or whatever, but if anyone comes here or familiar with other assemblies, then dollar usually has a different meaning, like literal or something like that. So, you know, uh, let's keep it simple. Like, you know, if you really need to call a local like R or something, use lowercase or like any other character started with, it's going to be fine. Um, so we have a register and it names the register. And we can see in this case, we have some extra information that we printed out here. So here we have, we've interpreted this number um, as an actual number. And we check that, we check the balance of that number too. And now we can have a look at the, the error here. So let's say that we, we name a register that's too large. Then we run this and it's going to say on line three, column five, we have an invalid register. So line three, column five, right here, right here, this is an invalid register, 199. That doesn't, that register doesn't exist. Um, same thing if we like do something like this, it's also like, yeah, that's not a number. But in that case, we're, we're not that detailed about the error message. Really, we, we only care about that this is an invalid register. Uh, and then, you know, it keeps going here. I'm just testing, uh, just making sure that the Unicode, uh, sorry, the UTF-8 validator is like, okay. It's not a perfect validator, but it's just, it's just something fun that I did last night just to make sure that um, it's really dumb actually. And again, it's not, it's not super reliable, but it's okay. This thing is like, you know, eats some uh, UTF-8 sequences uh, when it's scanning a symbol. So here's my, I'm using my favorite um, example uh, that has a zero with joiner here somewhere. Um, so it's a, uh, it's the emoji for like woman and then it's so skin tone modifier five and then zero with joiner. And then we have a, um, so start. So which winner? Yeah, and then we have a, um, a rocket, and that becomes woman astronaut with skin tone modifier five, woman astronaut. Uh, so that's what we're seeing over here. It's a little emoji representation. And now we just got return, you know, and and our real function I'm just keeping it small now just to test things out. Like this is obviously not like valid syntax, but we'll get to that. The real program that we're gonna parse is is more like this, right? It has some some actually uh, meaningful stuff in it. So uh, yeah, that's that's what we are now. I'm going to do a separate video when I'm working on implementing the parser. So here, that's the summary of where we are and how things work.